Hi, and welcome to the Spotlight series presented by the National Cryptologic Museum. My name is Spencer Allenball. I'm the Collections Manager. And I'm Rob Simpson. I'm the museum's librarian. So what are we talking about today, Spencer? So we're talking about something really cool. So this, these artifacts are very, very old, World War II. So I have to take you back to Station Hypo, uh -huh. which was one of the main cryptographic stations during World War II. And um, at the station, run by Joseph Rochefort, based out of Hawaii, just give you a quick little recap of it. Um, when you think of codes, what you're going to think of is some of our larger devices like the bomb, which helped break Enigma, right. and the purple analog, which helped break the Japanese purple machine. And Colossus that and the British Colossus, made. Exactly. What you don't think of and what you don't normally see are working aids like this. Now, these were handmade, so that kind of points to the engineering capability mm -hmm. and the intelligence that went into making devices like this. So, in breaking codes, you have to be very good at math in general, specifically statistics, right. because you're going to be looking for repetitions, things like that. Now, what this device right here is, this is a depth finder. So what this would have been used for is to help find cryptographic depth. What, so, is, what is cryptographic depth? That's a, a perf perfect entry. So, depth finder sounds like a submarine. Yeah, thing. it does. A, l a little bit. You think of like the yeah. depth sensors and things right. like that. Now, essentially what a depth finder was is you're looking for cryptographic depth, which is the concept of looking for indicators. So if there's enough messages that come through, some oh, of there's so enough ciphertext. Yep. That you have enough material to work from to, to find those uh, exactly. statistically significant. Yep, so they'll take statistics on all of these messages and they'll keep looking for repetitions and they'll mark them down. This would have helped do that. So essentially they would have used these knobs right here to keep indicating of which ones came through. Okay. And eventually they would help them find a little bit of a, possibly a key to work through. And that jumps into the next device. So this is a Ransupan key generator. Now this was based on additive principles and you can kind of see which is the coolest part all of the numbers listed here. And now these numbers would have been used with a channel board, which would have sat on the front, uh -huh. and they would have used that to help identify the different keys that it possibly could have been. So they would just run through and statistically used it. So when you say additives, what you mean is, um, so the Japanese Naval Code, for example, JN25, what we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, had two code books. And so the first code book was, this is the Japanese word and this is the number it equates to. And once they had changed the message into those numbers, they would take the second book and add those numbers to the first set of numbers exactly. to, to hide it even more, to super encipher it. Mm -hmm. And so this would help them strip off the additive part so they could get at the code book. Yeah, and then once they've got the key, it's, it's a lot easier from there, and then cracking it is a little bit closer. And they still have to be brilliant to be able to do that. Sure. Um, and one of the things that is, is always said, and this was coined by Herbert Yardley, was the phrase cipher brains. You have to be highly intelligent to be able to do cryptography, and sometimes even bringing people in to learn it doesn't always work. You have right. to have a special mindset, and that's what that phrase cipher brains comes from. Um, now, that's pretty much all I have on these two devices here, but they are very interesting. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add? Well, just that you had mentioned that um, we don't have a lot of these. We do not. And so when you look at a, 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 a cryptographic bomb, it's a great big metal thing. Exactly. This is a small handmade thing made out of paper and wood, and that's probably why we don't have as many of them. Yeah, and they, they will not last either. And it, we're lucky enough that these were stored properly to last as right. long as they have. But that's pretty much all we have, so I want to thank you for tuning in.